everyone. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics, food. I love food. I love to eat it, but I also love to prepare it and to be the alchemist in my kitchen. And over this 20 plus years of health research, of course, food was a great part of it. So I tried a lot and I ditched a lot when new research came out that told me that things that I thought that were really healthy weren't so healthy after all. So it was a journey for me not only to dig the research almost every day, but also to see how I reacted on that food, how I felt about that food while eating, but especially afterwards. And I bet in some way or another, you have been on a food journey too. There are a lot of people liking food, but have a little bit of a love-hate relationship with it because, well, food can also be very tiring, can uh, have a consequence of weight gain or waist gain. So it is a topic that it is, is quite difficult also because we have all these streams of information coming to us with what is good, what is superfood, uh, what is bad food, and it can be extremely confusing and conflicting. And it was really a relief for me when um, there were some meta studies that were quite univocal about what is the food or the, the, the group of foods that are absolutely health promoting. It's not only a good way to prevent chronic diseases, it's also a means to reverse chronic diseases and to reverse, to reverse premature aging. Now, normal aging, I see that as really getting wiser, having a lot of experience in life, having a lot of beautiful memories. There's nothing wrong with aging, but there is something wrong with premature aging, uh, not for aesthetics, but just because our body and our mind is, our brain especially, is deteriorating. And therefore, Aging has a different connotation of really getting old before it is our time. Uh, actually, aging is not really different from chronic diseases. It is built upon systemic low-grade inflammation, and it has all the characteristics of the initial stages of um, chronic diseases. Chronic diseases develop from these generic symptoms uh, to uh, be localized uh, in an organ or localized in a body or localized in a typical chronic disease. And aging has a little bit of decline in it. Uh, frailty things that that all everything of our function what we can is just you know slowing down is declining with our vision our hearing our our walking our mobility like everything is just well declining and but in essence, it is it is a form of chronic disease when we are premature aging, and because of that, there are also premature chronic diseases, premature deaths. 
So it's really important that we do everything that we can to prevent it, but we are here to reverse it. So uh, what is the best food or food groups that you can um, consume each day, every day to reverse chronic disease? Now, the thing is that when we look at a standard American diet. Now, I know a lot of you do not eat a standard American diet. A standard American diet is a, an average diet. It is probably not you um, because you're watching this um, and, and you probably have a way higher uh, awareness of what food can do to your brain and to your body, to your health, to your longevity. However, um, still, if we do not have a standard American diet, what do we, what, what is the alternative that is really reversing chronic disease? That's the big question of uh, today. Now, the standard American diet is low-grade inflammation promoting. So the standard American diets has all the ingredients to induce low-grade inflammation. And over time, it is progressive because when there's no resolution, when the stream of food that is pro-inflammatory keeps coming every day, three times a day, couple of snacks, um, then inflammation calls for more inflammation when there's no resolution. So it is a progressive process, meaning that it adds up, not linearly, but exponentially. So progressive. Um, the thing is, that if we switch to a whole foods plant-based diet that has been researched over the past decades and, and all the studies are quite univocal, that that is a health-promoting diet, a whole foods plant-based diet. The thing is that this diet is anti-inflammatory and because we also use it let's say two or three times a day it also uh, ensures that the inflammation declines progressively it decreases progressively so you can really feel better let's say in maybe even in a couple of days, but for sure within a couple of weeks, you will feel the difference. And that is what I would recommend that when you adapt a, um, a to a whole foods plant-based diet fully, that you also feel your body and feel what is right for you. Not everything is right for you because maybe the carloads of fruits and veggies are really too much for your belly at this point. Or maybe you still have some food sensitivities. So just feel what is right for you. That's a really good guide. Your feelings, also emotionally, but physically as well, are a really good guide. Now, how should how can you adopt a whole foods plant based diet? Well, I made it really easy, really simple, because then we can recall it every time that we want to fill our plate. Here it is. It's our plate. This is the plate of a whole foods plant based diet. Like this. So, like this is better. Whoa, whoa. Half of your plate should be fruits and veggies. A quarter 
should be legumes. And another quarter should be whole grains. And then you add a handful of nuts and another good source of fat. And that can be an avocado. I love avocados. So uh, they're really filling and they're a good source of fat. So this is really easy, right? So whatever fruits or veggies you can find, of course, there is a difference. That is a next level. Some fruits are better than others. Some veggies are better than others. Some legumes are better than others. Some grains are better than others. But just for simplicity's sake, if you only do this, you absolutely will feel better in a couple of days and for sure within weeks. It is also not to carload your plate. It is also a portion size, but really with fruits, if you fill it with fruits and veggies, half of your plate, you're quite filled up already, right? Unless it's not only a salad. Salads are great, but um, you can use all the veggies and uh, for, for for simplicity's sake, just eat them raw or cooked, whatever you want to do, the fruits, cold or warm, legumes, all will do. Beans are great, uh, but lentils are wonderful. If you can have the sprouted um, uh, lentils or sprouted beans, Excellent. Um, the grains like uh, kamut or uh, I never know how you say it right. It's quinoa or knoya or whatever. You know what I mean, right? They're a great source of protein, great source of fiber. They're excellent. Or oats, really good. And really, you. this is for simplicity's sakes, but and I do not take two meals a day filling my plate like this. And um, usually I take my breakfast around 11 in the morning. So I have a window that my body can repair after my last meal at a, between 6 or 7 in the evening until 11 in the morning and then I take my breakfast because I do not want to skip my breakfast. I love my breakfast and usually I take a big bowl of oats uh, with a handful of nuts in it. I love it and then I top it with a load of berries with blueberries, strawberries, sometimes a kiwi or an orange uh, so uh, when I had that, then, well, the next meal uh, are, is more a little bit more uh, veggie based. And in the evening, usually I have the legumes, but sometimes also for lunch. So you can just play with it. But if that is not your thing or in the beginning, you're just, you know, adapting to this diet, just take this plate. Just take a screenshot. Yeah, you have it. And then um, you, the, oh, barely miss praying this. You, maybe you want to take a screenshot like this. Right. So then um, you can, you, you have a real easy guide that half of your plate is fruits and veggies and a quarter legumes and a quarter the whole grains and, and also the whole fruits and the whole veggies, right? Really, what you first and foremost want to do is avoid processed foods. When you say, when you see that there it is advertised as healthy or advertised as veggies, maybe that is the case, but watch out and watch the ingredients if you have the time. If you do not have the time, just take the whole foods and 
make it yourself if you do have time you can really prepare a meal if you do not have time just eat them as they are because you will you will get a different taste as soon as you release processed foods you release a lot of additives and you get a different taste buds or better said your taste buds come to the surface again mm -hmm. so your taste will change you will enjoy the foods way and way more mm -hmm. you will start to make use of spices which are just an excellent way for just simply uh, steam your veggies a bit with a with a couple of herbs they're great they're really wonderful uh, to eat but you can also make your your chilies or great soups and that's maybe also a hint to when you start off and your your microbiome is not really optimal so to speak because previously you did not eat enough fibers or you had some antibiotics or some treatments that destroyed your microbiome then start off with smoothies smooth juices as I as I call it smooth juices are a great way to to get these fruits and veggies in because you just put them straight in the blender with some ice cubes and you a little water and well when you blend them really thorough then you get a real smooth juice it's a little bit thick it has a nice texture and it's really filling and easy on your digestion and you can just start off with some fruits and then add some veggies in it like spinach or celery or kale uh cucumber what have you the other way is to make soups you can put anything like in soups and you and when you add those spices they can be really great if you have a starchy veg vegetable like uh, a sweet potato or chickpeas uh, beans um then you get a nice text texture in the soup well you just have to cook it and you have some nice herbs in it and um uh well you get great soups and it's also quite easy and kind for your digestion so when you have a little bit of digestive problems in the beginning be a little low on the legumes because they can be um well they take a little bit more of energy right so you have to have a, a strong microbiome for um for a good digestion add your nuts nuts are really great sources of nutrients all kinds they're they're too much to mention they're really helping you not to reduce inflammation but also to get a better hormone balance and what we see in the early stages of chronic diseases that we get a that that people get a metabolic syndrome like diabetes or an insulin resistance uh the 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 blood pressure goes up the the triglycerides go up the waste gain starts to happen and nuts are really especially walnuts but all types of nuts are really great and you only need a small hand each day and it will absolutely not add to your weight it will subtract from your weight it will also subtract from your chronic disease so what has been researched is that this whole foods plant-based diet is lowering inflammation 
It's an anti-inflammatory diet. It also strengthens your immune system, not only because it lowers inflammation, but also because it is strengthening your microbiome, your second immune system. It is lowering your uh, insulin resistance and therefore your metabolism uh, improves and your fat storage is reduced. That's a, that's, that's a great point too, right? That's a huge benefit. What also has been found is that within our cells, at the level of the DNA, the telomeres that are the end caps of our uh, DNA, they lengthen again. What happens when we have inflammation, they shorten. And what has been found is the length of those telomeres are a measure for our longevity. So when they lengthen again, we have a better outlook on getting older in a healthy way. So these are all benefits. There are so many, too much to mention, to adopt to a whole foods plant-based diet. Actually, to make it simple, the only thing you have to remember is to eat and drink uh, everything that is whole, is not processed, and it is plant-based. So everything that is fresh. Now, you can also take the, the, the legumes canned, of course. I mean, some you can make it fresh or dried. They are very easy to, to, to cook. Um, so you can take the fresh ones also for the fruits. Not everyone has a availability to fresh fruits or veggies. So frozen will do as well. There is a real uh, consideration of frozen foods because they are frozen like immediately after taking it off the field, right? So the, nutri the, the nutrients are, are quite good preserved. So if you do not have availability to fresh ones, uh, then canned or frozen will do as well. The thing to remember is that a whole foods plant based diet in these um in a plate like this will reverse will support will support <laughs> uh, the reversal of uh, chronic diseases and uh, sometimes it is really enough to reverse your chronic disease there are many doctors showing that with such a diet, you can reverse heart disease, you can reverse cancers or autoimmune diseases, thyroid diseases. However, there may be other causes at play, right? And we talked about that earlier, and we will talk about that many times in the future because we also have our mental states, our stress states. The thing is, when we move to a whole foods plant-based diet, because our microbiome improves such a great deal, and because we get more energy, we feel more vital, our mental states improve. The inflammation in our brain lowers as well. So there are less episodes of anxiety and depression, less feelings of stress. So there are so many benefits. I hope I made my case. And really in the future, we will dive more into those food groups separately because, well, there is a lot of nice 
dishes to make or a lot of superfoods that can add a little bit to reversing chronic disease or add to recreating health. So we will do that for the future. But for now, keep it simple, a whole foods plant-based diet. So enjoy.